Hello, I'm Hilary Hahn. I'm here with Mason Bates. And we're in San Francisco. We're sitting outside because it's nice, even though it's winter. It's a lot nicer than <laughs> anywhere else in this country, apparently. <laughs> yes. Um, Mason is a composer I've been working with, and he wrote a piece for my project, my encore's project. Do you want to say something about composing or about the piece? Well, it was great to write for Hillary. The the piece called Ford's Farm is um, a kind of reimagination of the workshop of Henry Ford. You know, he, he grew up in Michigan on a farm, and um, I was trying to kind of conjure his hometown and his home life um, in a piece that ultimately gets incredibly energetic. Um, because of course he's the man behind a lot of the uh, energy that drives our civilization. <laughs> and he played violin, right? Yeah, he was a fiddler, and um, you know, until I actually came across a photo of him holding a fiddle, I, I didn't entirely uh, <laughs> understand that he was um, a pretty devoted musician. Mm -hmm. How did you, did you ever play violin, or how did you get into music? I wish, I wish I'd play the violin or any other string instrument. I. Um, I got into music basically um, because I had a great music teacher at my, my school in Virginia and she ended up supporting me as a composer as I was writing. Oh, bye. <laughs> okay. Techies. <laughs> So you had a great music teacher. Yeah, I mean, I was writing music at the piano. She was my piano teacher, also my choral director and theory teacher. It was a very small when school. When was this? This was like... Um, Elementary school? Middle school? About like, when I was nine or ten. And mm -hmm. Hope Armstrong Herb said, you know, you need to practice more on the piano because you'll never be a great composer if you can't actually um, play an instrument. So, you know, there's always a... A great music teacher, I think, behind a lot of uh, yeah. people who go into music. Do you have an instrument now? Well, I mean, like I said, I, I played piano. I've, I guess I've migrated into electronic instruments, um, whether they be analog, like the turntable. Um, I, I do work as a DJ. Or um, when I perform with orchestras, I will often use an electronic drum pad and a laptop to kind of uh, bring the, the electronic part to life live in my pieces. So I, I still think it's important to play um, an old-fashioned instrument as well as uh, okay. some of the new fashion ones, but um, having your foot uh, in both worlds has, has been really valuable for me. What's the creative difference for you between composing and being on stage performing? You know, there are very different um, kinds of worlds. I think when you're composing, you're living this world of perfectionism where you want everything to be exactly uh, right. And as a kind of hyper-controlling classical composer, um, you know, I probably am, you know, the absolute caricature of a perfectionist when I'm composing. When you're performing, you know, you can't possibly um, live or die on the accuracy of every, you know, minute moment of a piece. Well, it goes by and you can't reshape it once it yeah, happens. So it, you're in it and it's shaping that's right. itself in a way. And, you know, as we all know, comparing live recordings to studio recordings, um, you know, there's a magic of live performance that is um, not really dependent on, you know, absolute 100% precision at every second. In fact, sometimes the shape of a piece um, will be much um, more true to the to the work um, when a performer you know plays it live with the kind of lack of inhibition that a live performance brings. Oh, and do you feel like when you hear the orchestra play something you've written because you have this unique experience of writing for orchestra and then also sometimes being able to be in the orchestral surroundings when it's being performed, right? Yeah. So is that does it sound like you expect? Um, no, actually, because often I'm in the worst part of the orchestra, which is the percussion section. I mean, I love it, but acoustically, yeah. I'm in a complete black hole. Everything's going the other direction. That's right, yeah. I mean, when we were doing um, a piece of mine called The B-Sides at the San Francisco Symphony a few weeks ago, you know, I was right next to Tim Higgins, the principal trombone, a wonderful guy, great player. 
Um, but to me, the piece sounded like a trombone concerto, <laughs> not because of Tim, but just because of my placement. <laughs> so on top of that, you know, I'm having to manage um, my part of, the, part of the performance with the electronics. And so when I'm in that mode, I'm, I'm just focused on what I have to do. And of course, you know, I'm also trying to, to take note of um, what's going right, what's going wrong. But I have to, to really you know, shift gears um, into being in a performing mentality because otherwise I would just go crazy. <laughs> yeah. You were in Chicago last night. You just flew in today. Do you want to talk a little about the stuff you do in like, different cities as a performer and those are like the different creative things you do? Yeah, I mean, Chicago is where I spend most of my time these days as a musician because I've um, got a long-term relationship with the Chicago Symphony as their meet composer in residence, and I have really enjoyed not only writing for the orchestra and maestro Ricardo Muti, um, but also curating concerts there, and that's something we were talking about oh, earlier. Yeah. Um, I curate a whole series with composer Anna Klein called Music Now that um, integrates you know, lighting and video and um, new music into a kind of immersive concert experience that is really different from the kind of standard you know, new music concert at Merkin Hall or something. It's it's absolutely um, taking the information from the program book and making it ambient. And, um, you know, it's something that I think Chicago is particularly well primed for. It's a city with, you know, a great appetite for new art and adventure. And um, particularly with the symphony's history of doing um, very provocative new works from Boulez to, um, you know, Carter and, um, also, its long history of doing, you know, the great rep. Um, the city has has a big appetite for a lot of different kinds of styles. Mm -hmm. Do you do a residency in different places from time to time? Sort of like yeah, you yeah. do this kind of thing for a year. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the nice thing about the Chicago position is that it's really the best composer residency out there. In that, it they just kind of created this position in the '80s that became a model for other orchestras. And it's the most kind of substantive residency I've ever done where, you know, you're on the ground for two months of the year there. Um, but um, I absolutely um, love working with, with different orchestras in different ways. You know, San Francisco has had me as a composer residence for a couple of years, and um, that's now moving into a, a curating role as they do um, a new series in their Zeller box space. So, you know, it's, it's something that um, I think a composer really should be a part of not only writing music but presenting music to audiences and um and other music besides their yeah own absolutely yeah and and you know because every composer yeah. knows so much about other pieces i mean it's yeah like, you have to be encyclopedic about it but to think about how they go together too is great that's right i mean in, in you know having your cd with 27 different composers i think it's 27 yeah. it's yeah, yeah. you know that's a, a huge curating project that um has every kind of style from you know a to z on it it's really fun to think about putting things together but it's also fun to immerse yourself in each piece and for you you're like totally immersed because you hear it from even a different perspective but uh what what um final question what in music do you really love like what makes you excited to be in this creative musical world it could be anything Curious. Well, I, I've always loved when a piece of music takes you on on a journey that doesn't have to be a very literal journey, although sometimes in my music it is, but um, you know, it, it can be something as narrative as the Berlioz Symphony Fantastique where you actually have a kind of narrative or story that's going on at the same time with this incredible music and, and those two things are interacting in a way that's phenomenal. Or it could be, you know, a completely sonic journey, um, you know, where like a, a piece kind of transforms like the Ligeti Violin Concerto um, over the extent of the piece into this kind of fractalized world. I just like the idea of, of, of traveling, you know, of, 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 you know, the music being a time-based art can take us places that um, even some of the great literature cannot. You know, it's both visceral and very abstract, and I think that it has a unique ability um, to take us somewhere that is incredibly far from where we began, but because we've been with it the whole way, it can, it can feel very natural. 
Thank you. Absolutely. Good to talk. Okay.